realize that you have a pretty good grip on data. You're, you're pretty good with data analysis. And it's a lot of, uh, it, it informs a lot of what you do. Where did you pick I, up I, that I, skill? I talk, I talk a good game. Yeah? <laughs> Where did you pick up the data analysis skills? The, not so much a skill, but if I possess a skill, it's understanding the importance of data, particularly in my business. And one of the things that I become known for is the creation of and use of a system called CompStat. That's short for computer statistics. It was an initiative we developed in the NYPD back in the 1990s when we set up a system that we did something unheard of in American policing, indeed in the public sector. We agreed to be held accountable for what we did. And in the NYPD, when I first went in there, I set a numerical goal for crime reduction. That was unheard of. No American police department had ever done that. We set a goal of 10%, I think we got 15%. Next year, we set a goal of 15%, and I think we got 18 to 19%. But what we also did was say we would be held accountable for crime going up or down. And the CompStat system was based on four basic premises. Timely, accurate intelligence. Take our crime information every day. While I've been sitting here talking to you, my BlackBerry has gone off uh, four times, vibrating. Every shooting in the city of Los Angeles Every homicide, I get notified about it instantaneously as it's being reported. And then I get follow-up reports as the investigations go forward. I get timely, accurate intelligence about what's going on in this city. And last week when I was in Jordan, 9,000 miles away, my BlackBerry would go off with every shooting and every homicide in the city of Los Angeles from 9,000 miles away. So I'm never away from that timely, accurate intelligence. The second thing we do is rapidly respond to that. We put cops on the dots. We track intimately where are the spikes occurring, where is things getting worse, where are they getting better. And with a very small police force, we're continually moving them around to deal with those peaks and valleys. Thirdly, effective tactics. What works best? Plain clothes, uniform, task forces with our federal and county colleagues. What is the best? Medicine, it's very, think of it from a, me, a, a, a medical perspective. You're a patient, a doctor looks at you, he talks to you, what are you feeling, how are you feeling? He does a few tests, timely accurate intelligence. He gauges what needs to be treated right now versus what can be treated a little later. So he rapidly responds to if you're on the trauma table and you're having a heart attack, he's gonna basically take care of your heart and then he'll deal with other things a little later, but he, he needs to basically stabilize you. Effective tactics, you know, might be initially you're gonna have that trauma surgeon in the emergency room, but then they're gonna bring in the anesthesiologist, they're gonna bring in the heart specialist, they're gonna bring in the pulmonary specialist. So that's the effective tactics. And then after that, what is it? Relentless follow-up. I want you back next week, I want you back next month, I wanna do those continual checks. Effectively, what we've done with American policing is we have approached it like doctors approach medicine. And uh, one of the things I've become known for is that approach, the CompStat system, which is uh, basically just that. It's a medical approach to dealing with crime. In the past, prior to 1994 in New York City, we would gather crime statistics twice a year to send them off to the federal government for the National Crime Report. There was almost no other department in the country that was using the crime statistics instantaneously to direct where our police resources were going. Instead, we were chasing 911 calls. We were chasing the 911 ferry. You call, we'd come. In this city, a million times a year, you'd call and we wouldn't come because there were not enough cops. A million times a year, you would dial 911 and we would not come. So we were promising you something that we couldn't deliver. It'd be like a doctor basically giving you just placebos instead of actual medicine to deal with your, your illnesses. After a while, if you're sick, all the placebos in the world aren't gonna make you better. And that's what was happening in LA that we were going into free fall. 